Welcome to Louisiana Heartbeats. I'm Sudi Landry again. I'm hosting someone special who has something to offer Acadiana. You may know about Acadiana Memories, but I didn't. And I got to meet with Heather E. Seipel, and she is from our area. I think she is a born uh, Cajun person, and she has an, a resource that she wants to offer to you. So thank you for the sh uh, coming into the show, Absolutely. Heather. Absolutely. Thank you for having me, CD. Heather and I have a lot in common, Acadiana. She comes from a background of storytelling. <laughs> I like to write stories, I like to share stories, but Heather has come up with a unique way of capturing those stories in time for the future generations to be able not only to possibly see the person, but hear their actual voice, and if they're a storyteller, actually telling stories, or just talking about the family tree. And since you have done this, I'm gonna start off by asking you, Heather, why did you decide to do something like this and what is your background that gives you the passion to continue doing so? Okay, well, actually my degree is in history okay, um, and my minor is in anthropology, which is absolutely my passion. Um, the history kind of goes through different events and times and places, but the anthropology really captures everything about a person's experience in life. And so it goes through the culture, the psychology, the um, biology and medical aspects of a person's life. And so whenever I try to capture a person's life, this is everything that I am trying to include so that their family can know this person person a lot more completely and also future generations can know this individual. Well I'm going to go back and step back of, into the uh, old time okay. of doing things because she <laughs> represents the up-to-date technical <laughs> steps that have come a long ways. Um, Heather's, I had read some information on Heather that she shares on that web page that you see up there and I can tell you that I understood why she has such a passion, because she has a, had a special person in her life that's not on this planet at this time, but still mm -hmm. in her heart and in her presence, yes. her granny. Yes. And I understand that you were trying to share stories with your daughter, and it just didn't quite come out like you'd want, but yet, is that possibly part of why you want to offer this uh, to other people out there? Absolutely, too. absolutely. I um, thought that I could write volumes about my granny. She and I were so close my whole life growing up. And, you know, she passed away when my daughter was um, just under a year old. And so I try and explain this to my daughter and uh, it doesn't quite come out, you know, as completely and fully, you know, how do you physically describe somebody? How do you describe their personality? You know, I kept saying, she was the sweetest person ever. And my daughter was like, okay, that's nice. You know, and I was like, no, but you, how do I explain and really allow her to grasp the understanding of who this person was? And I was just falling short, you know, and um, so then also with my other grandmother, I had a short video recording um, and, you know, just different home videos and such. And it was nice because I could see her on the screen, but, you know, she was, you know, on the screen. I could tell her mannerisms and, and such, but then I came across an mm. audio recording mm. of her. And it was about a 20 minute long audio recording of her telling some stories when she was younger. And when I put in that recording, I felt like I was in the room there with her mm. again. And I, I could see everything. I could see the curtains, I could see the chairs, I could see her facial expressions throughout the stories that she was telling. And I said, I want to be able to give people that experience. Well, how long have you been offering to do this for people? How long has this been in uh, service been being? How, when was, how long have you been actually ready to share other people's stories? So actually, I it, I opened it as a business mm -hmm. at the beginning of last year. So, okay. you know, a, a year and a few months okay. now okay. it's been as a business. But I have been um, recording individuals for quite a while because I'm working on a book okay. about growing up in South Louisiana. So I was actually kind of landing interviews whenever I, I could and I was recording them on audio. Audio. Well, as the people can see, it's called Acadiana Memories. Yes. Now, it's actually, she puts it in words, recording life stories, and I added in audio. Yes. Okay, that is what makes it so unique is the fact that you 
Wow, just like I'm thinking of my best friend, I'm thinking yes. that of all the loved ones that I lost recently. And I, I had shared with you in our little meeting prior to this about me actually having a small recording of my 102 and a half year old great grandmother yes. and my 97 year old, her grandmother and then her sister. And we were all singing this song, which eventually <laughs> it was all on recording. Yes. And I found that. And so of course, different people in the family wanted a recording of it. And it was like us all trying to harmonize and we finally got it together. Good. <laughs> and we got a good story, but I can sense that that meant so much to me, but it meant mm -hmm. even more to be able to share with these other people in the family. So Absolutely. this is a great opportunity for people to to not only share in story and in print, but also the actual audio. mannerisms. Like I, I'm gonna share this one little story. I wish it would be in audio. Mm -hmm. If I, she was still around, my ma, ma ma vessel, look out. When she made her sesame seed candy, she licked her lips and she broke every knob on the stove and she, when she tapped it out, she didn't just cut it. She pulled a piece and she slammed it in your plate so you better learn to catch it or you were gonna miss it. And I can, and we laugh about that because there is a stove that still has where she kept breaking the knobs off. I mean, oh, bam, she was funny. really rough. But it's the store, the candy was good, but we all learned, <laughs> be ready, because she never knew what plate it was gonna hit. I mean, plop, plop, and I mean, literally, something you'd think you'd only see in movies. Right. And so, but she was a very <laughs> hilarious woman. So that was something I could picture these days. If I had the ability to have her here, I would be very interested in going out and audio in her. So, you know, good stories. Absolutely. And what you're offering is not just for people to, it's, hey, to me, it's an easy way out for people who want to want to but never know how to go about doing anything. Mm -hmm. It's to be, oh, yeah. there is a way, there is a way. All these wonderful veterans. Absolutely. That, that are still here. All these awesome stories of families, I mean, literally, memories, and, and just like you're writing a book. Yes. And it went from one area to another mm -hmm. area. Yes. I'm now seeing more and more Cajun stories coming through the outlet that I serve as Writers Guild in Acadiana. Yes. Uh, I mean, all the customs, black pot cooking, talking about the stories, and I can see some of this going on. Audio, even for them, while they're trying to reserve the exactly. memories of the past, you know? Absolutely. So you can say honestly that, that you just want to get it right and you want to do your part and keeping a candy, Katie Anna, who is your heart. Why? Because you're from here, aren't you? I absolutely am. And, you know, I find it very important um, to write down the stories is wonderful. But if you can hear them saying it in those words, you know, just as you were saying the story about... My you know, that's exactly. Oh, look out. <laughs> and the way that you enunciated those words just then yeah. made the story even more interesting and it kept people's attention if it were just in in words it would be lovely to yeah. have that story right. right but how much greater is it whenever it's in their own voice and in their own personality so anyone that would be interested in maybe finding out all the different things that you can mm -hmm. send them in the right direction they can always check out your web page and go from there absolutely right. it's acadianamemories.com that's right that's all you need to know remember yes. this is about acadiana it's about memories and and you get your information there. So you've already explained and shared why the voices are so important and I can relate to that. Okay, why don't you just share a story with us that you wish that, that you could have had on audio, one of many. You see one particular one that jumps out like right now, not that it's the best, the most important, but one. That Actually, yes. Um, I did not have this story on recording of my of my personal grandmother. Okay. So I um, I remember her telling this story, but I really wish we would have had it on audio because she did not tell it to very many people. Oh. So I was very privileged to get this story. But my grandmother and grandfather were Polish, okay. uh, hence my last name being <laughs> Seipel. Seipel. <laughs> and, uh, and so they actually met in a labor camp when they were in a labor camp in okay. Germany. Wow. So they had been taken from their home in Poland and they met in this labor camp. And she was actually on one farm and her husband was on another wow. farm. And she said her farmer was nice, but his was not so nice. <laughs> and so they actually ended up meeting. They would walk to the edge of each Aww. farm and like talk to each other across the fences. 
and she said that ended up to where his farmer really did not like her. <laughs> I love that story. This, those stories, if someone doesn't do something, they're lost. Yes. Whether they're in print, you just added an extra interest. Absolutely. And an extra memory and up to date with the technical and everything. Yes. I can see that. Uh, like my grandmother, and we called her little mother, she's from an area where she, uh, let me just say this, I come from a line of people who's written books, but I had no idea that The Yearling was one of the books that was written about my grandmother's family. Wow. And it was the truth in those days yeah. of actually can't befriend an animal because she had to end up killing that animal for food. Yes. So when this deer got into their, their, their uh, there's, it's been told many times by mm -hmm. other people, but it turns out one of my relatives is the one that actually wrote that story. Wow. And so I, as she began to tell the story, I'm like finding out this information many years later, and I'm going, wait a minute, whoa, whoa. You're talking about, yeah, is it it's a book you read or a story? No, that's my brother, my grandmother's, my mother's brother that wrote that story. Wow. So it was very interesting, and I wish that her telling the story could have been captured, but you, exactly. you can do it. But mm -hmm. why not do it now? Start something new now, and that's what Acadiana Memories is all about. Absolutely. So I was excited. I, I mean, Facebooking, they can even find out information and check out your webpage under the name there also, right? Yes, absolutely. What are some of the outlets that they can check out? What is it, Facebook? Are you Twitter? Or? No, but I do have Instagram and okay. LinkedIn under my personal name. So, so if they want information, then they can get send info mm -hmm. to you, or how do they? They just more or less uh, check out your web page and ask you the questions they need to ask. They can. They can um, actually email me at heather at acadianamemories.com, or send me a private message on Facebook at uh, Acadiana Memories page. Yeah. Okay. So let's kind of take the uh, audience that's out there watching this right now. Let's take them through what are some of the things maybe you've done. Just give us a glimpse into <laughs> examples of maybe people you've contacted so far. Not necessarily naming them, but the kind of activity that you offered. What, you mean? Like for example, service? okay, did you, hey, what, what is the structure? Do you adjust to each person, accommodate each person? Yes. Let's talk about how you absolutely you so tweak it. I kind of, you know, have a conversation with them and try to fit them into one of my current packages. And um, so it depends on really the length of time they want to record. Okay. If they want to focus on maybe one or two short stories, or if they want an, an entire life history, which I love doing. So, so we're talking about. Like, give us an example of time spans that you can okay. talk about your loved one. On audio. Okay. Maybe what, 30 minutes? Maybe how many hours? So my different packages go from a one hour or a two hour session. I call those my mini packages. And then I have an up to seven hours of recorded time or up to 14 hours of recorded time. And so I made them that way in due to the fact that um, with your older individuals, seven hours is actually enough time to cover a life history. Right. So do you, do you recommend that, number one, do you offer suggestions what would be mm -hmm. best for that person, whether they need someone to come with them? Or do you go out to them, or do they come to you all the time? So it's always an in-home recording. In-home, okay. I want them to feel completely comfortable and be able to open up absolutely completely to me and so I go to them and um, you know I try and be extremely warm and open and uh, so that they can warm up to me. Do you know what I'm thinking about uh, while you're talking I'm thinking Lord I wonder if she's gone to the nursing homes how many people out there have awesome stories yeah and the families that do go visit them you know absolutely and yeah. I, I think about the different people even some of the television shows I've seen where these people Mm -hmm. We're in a nursing home just sitting there and nobody's listening. I know. And then they partner them up with a kid, which I think is great, or yes. somebody to go in and visit, or what is it, grandmother, grandfather, mm -hmm. adoption day, stuff like that. I think that's awesome. I absolutely love going to the assisted living homes and nursing homes and doing these recordings. Um, it seems to brighten their day yeah. up and it, it just it makes me feel so wonderful. That's what was so special about me. I lost my grandmother, great grandmother, actually 10, 11 years ago. A little more than that, about 12. And I used to run to Arkansas and just, it was like mm -hmm. sitting in a rocking chair and just listening to all the stories. Oh, yeah. And it was so soothing. And yeah. and they enjoyed telling the stories because they yes. were getting the attention. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, that's how I did a seven generation, as I had mentioned to you, family tree on rollout 
freezer paper. They kept yes. talking and they kept talking. No, don't put those on the family tree. I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. It was interesting, but but then again, audio yes. came later and I, and I didn't have enough to take to really at that time, but yes. so I think this is wonderful. Heather, mm -hmm. what, uh, what are some of the things that you would like to do beyond what you're doing right now with this? What is your whole vision or do you have one yet? Is it growing? I do. I really, I the really book. hope. The book. I do. <laughs> I intend to write a book. I'm actually working on having a podcast okay. um, that deals with um, interviewing, you know, just local people that we're pretty familiar with or should be familiar with. That's right. So Good. watch for that coming out. Um, I'll post that on Acadiana Memories page too. And um, so, yeah, but no, I really do envision this being something that people realize that they need and they want. And so just like people go to professional photographers mm -hmm. and have that family picture taken every so often, that this is something that they will realize, oh, okay, we really do want the life history. We really do want the family history. And so let's call and get one of these packages, you know? Um, and so, I, you know, it's it's just beautiful. It's so wonderful, just the idea. I know you get excited just talking yeah. about it. And, and while you're talking, I'm thinking of different people I, that they need to contact you yes. to just, you know, if they want to share and, and um, lock that memory down Absolutely. for future generations to enjoy and actually hear the voice telling the story is awesome. Yeah, I love actually, that idea. I have um, different packages too. You know, it's not just elderly people. A no, lot of this people one we think need to talk about that you? it's just elderly people. But I say, you know, really, 50s and 60 year olds are really an ideal point in time for someone to to actually do this because they remember so much more. And I always tell people, do you think you're going to remember more in 20 years? More than likely I have an not. answer to that. <laughs> now that I've no. made it on this planet, it's now just recently 67 years. I believe in writing everything down, but I can tell yeah. you one thing. I find myself thinking a whole lot now. I understand. I can personally tell you from getting older, you remember the past more than you remember the future. Yeah. And, and the present. Right. And I really didn't understand it until I'm at that age right now, and I mm -hmm. find myself... And I'm looking at my daughter because she all of a sudden she'll see me. She'll go, okay, what's wrong with mom? All of a sudden she's got this look. At, and I'll look at her and I'll see this look and go, hey, I was just remembering this and I'd share it with her. And then I realized, no wonder they think us getting older. We're losing it. But we actually got all these memories coming. Yes. And uh, in between the storytelling, great-grandmother used to be an actress. And wow. what happened is that sometimes we had to decipher what was her acting and what was the real story so we didn't believe everything she was telling us so wow. we'd always have to confirm it with grandmother or her sister aunt yeah. Bernice you know and so but she was such an entertainer we didn't know if she was acting or performing or if she was really <laughs> telling the truth but we found out yeah 90 percent was the truth that's okay. fascinating and then she was telling some she was telling some stories I'm like oh I don't even know if I want to share that with anybody else but yeah. it was the plantation days and we say the good old days but that was some rough rough days they really were you know it was tough and that's the stories that I was capturing mm -hmm. you know it was from her good imagine just like you said with your grandparents my great-grandmother was from wealth her father uh -huh. and uh, and when she wanted to marry my my grandfather they were against it so okay. she was disinher disinherited from the England background really? so she chose love over money and wow. she uh, he didn't last very long and the whole point is he died early and she went through many husbands after that and oh. she has a really colorful <laughs> history of the wrong side of the track and then the right side of the track. But all these stories are stories people would flock with me and say, when you go into Arkansas, I want to be on that train with you or I want to be in that car with you. Yes. And then I'd get back. It's always an adventure. It's always storytelling, always something. So when I get back, even my dentist would call and say, okay, what happened? You went, what happened on the trip? Yeah. <laughs> storytelling. Yes. And it got to a point, seriously, Heather, I wished I would have recorded everything. I had a beauty yes. shop and people would flock to after oh. I got back and want to know what happened. We know something happened and one particular day, and I'll end it with this on that topic, is that the storytelling was so interesting and didn't have to make it up. It was true that yeah. my sister and I encountered one particular incident. We said, okay, we ain't telling nobody about this. So whenever <laughs> we got back, it was so far-fetched, it was unbelievable. 
we got through it, but the whole thing is, there's more to that story, and it'll be written later. Okay. But uh, what happened is we decided we're not going to tell anybody about the story, and they say, we know something happened. Something <laughs> always happens. Right. So when you have this storytelling, and it's an interest to people, and what's more interesting than hearing true stories? Absolutely. Stories of survival, stories of faith, stories of passion, stories literally of community interests, you know, like you. Yes. I'm a person that loves sharing what the per people are doing in community. I'm local. My heart is local. There's yes. a lot of people out of Louisiana, but my heart is to get the ones local. What's yeah. going on in Lafayette around this area? Absolutely. And I had never heard of anyone else doing this. No. So Katie had a memory, so it's like, wow, and I had you down, like I told you. Yes. I had I saw you on Facebook, somebody shared or you shared. Mm -hmm. And from there I went, Oh, I gotta get her on mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden I think I approached you or somehow you ended up at a meeting and yes. you introduced yourself and I went, Oh, oh you know, so <laughs> this how that's why we're here today. Very good. I love your idea. I love Thank your you. passion. I love the reason that you are creating this. And with that said, what else would you like to share before we get into even getting near to the end of the show? Okay, well, um, actually, I do a little bit more than just entire life stories. So That's what we need to know. Yeah, I have a package that people seem to really love. Um, it's a one-hour session where two people come together, and they talk about how they met. So it's oh, for a couple of comments. Love story. Love story package. Yes. Oh. They tell about how they met, how they felt, and over the course of the time when they were dating and up through their marriage. So wow. that's a really great gift to be able to give their family. That's some memory you know? caught in audio. Wow. Absolutely. So from the beginning yes. of life, life as a married couple or whatever, mm -hmm. all the way through the life of the person and People tell the stories also after they're gone. Yeah. So you really offer to cover it all, huh? I do actually, and I'm just but starting in a, a unique new way. It's not the normal. It's not the. Right. It's new. It's different. Yeah. So yeah. I call myself a creative historical preservationist. So there you go. I want to creatively capture all the different moments in people's lives. So I'm rolling out a new package shortly, which will be um, when someone finds out that they're having a baby, Aww. they can um, do a little recording. And so it'll be over the course of their pregnancy, about four different recording sessions so that they'll capture their feelings and, and their aspirations. And uh, Well, here we are on television. It's <laughs> going to be on the air soon and on Acadiana Open Channel first, then it'll yeah. go into YouTube, and then after YouTube, it'll be shared on Facebook. Yes. So I'm believing that people out there are going to be excited like I am, that there is something like this. It's sure going to make life a whole lot easier for a lot of us. Okay. I mean, people who want to write but don't know how to write can also go. In fact, I had someone inquire, mm -hmm. and I was excited to find out not only, okay, switching gears, you also yes. are a ghostwriter. I am. <laughs> since you are going to be publishing a book, and that yeah. was an added asset to me to be able to get permission to recommend you to other people who need, yes. need help to tell their stories. Absolutely. You know, and then I'll be able to share. And I did I get in touch with this other lady, like I told you. And so uh, she's definitely at her convenience, 90-something years old. We'll be getting in touch with you. Wow. And she's writing poetry, and she's writing wow. her memoirs. And Beautiful. she's an awesome lady. And Good. so I'm trying to give her all the information I can regarding you. And she is very, very intelligent. Kate Rafford, believe it or not. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, how do you like that name, Kate Rafford? And she's an awesome lady. Well, I'm uh, with Louisiana Heartbeats, and, of course, we're sitting here and just so many great opportunities come forward after having guests on this show that Katie Ann, I'm trying to talk Heather into possibly creating her own show so she can <laughs> share some of these stories, even with Katie Ann Open Channel, you yeah. know, and, and uh, at the same time, possibly be using some of the facilities here and just feathering whatever you need to do. Right. Katie Ann Open Channel offers you the, the, the opportunity to share your story, and if you don't know how to go about it, gives you different outlets by listening to the guests like we have on our show and other shows here. And then if you really want to go further with it, then sometimes you can even join AOC. And from there, who knows? We may have another show called KatieOnTheMemories.com on the air. <laughs> well, possible. tune in every Monday night and uh, be, be sure to let us know what you're interested in hearing and be able, when you can, to check out KatieOnTheMemories.com 
and Heather Seifel will have what she offers there mainly is great direction, maybe to help your dream come true or to secure that memory of the person or even yourself in the future of generations to come. Until then, be blessed. And Heather, while the rolling credits are there, is there anything you'd like to close the show out with? No, oh, no, thank you so much for having me here. Well, thank you for adjusting to a very busy schedule, which I know you have. <laughs> I'm so glad we met. I Likewise. hope to do another show. Okay, oh, yeah. absolutely.